It's the Doctor's Kitchen cook along again. Um, today we're going to be doing something, uh, it's always very simple, I, know, I keep on repeating myself, um, super simple, super super simple today. I'm going to turn this pan on. Uh, it's a mushroom, it's a play on a bourguignon, which is a traditional sort of French dish, which is stewed over a long period of time, usually has beef in it, um, some veggies, a real unctuous thick sauce. Um, what's really important about this recipe is the red wine, which is why I'm going to be having it with some red wine today. I might have a glass myself, um, moderation. Uh, uh, I posted the ingredients on Instagram and on Facebook. So if you're cooking along, give me a hand, like a, a wave or a thumbs up or I'm cooking or something like that. I'd love to see who's actually cooking with me because I always find these quite exciting. Uh, no red wine, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, and oh thanks you cook loads of the dishes and they're fantastic brilliant so this dish is going to be a uh, mushroom bourguignon so like I said it's a plate of a traditional bourguignon which is um, a beef dish but this is going to be using brown lentils for the sort of plant-based protein element of it we've got leeks we've got some beautiful onions a little bit of um, well I'm using rosemary but you could use sage you could use parsley some bay leaves here some dried uh, herbs, so that's a uh, herb de Provence, which is a mixture of like um, marjoram and uh, thyme, or dried oregano, a, a very sort of typical French dish. Extra virgin olive oil, some mushrooms for flavour, a little, little bit of veg stock. The, the thing about the uh, brown lentils is that they're very quick cooking, and I've soaked these uh, for a little bit, like probably about 15 minutes or so, you don't need to soak them overnight, and they, they will cook in about 20, 25 minutes. But if you haven't soaked them, don't worry, um, and we will, you know, you just need to cook it for a little bit longer until they're firm but soft. Um, as in firm to the bite, but, but cooked and soft inside. I'll just put the um, uh, boiling kettle on as well, so I've got some boiling water. Uh, you'll cook it for Friday, no worries. Uh, there's loads of veg in this dish. So we've got uh, leeks, um, we have uh, onion, I'm gonna get chopping with this, and I'm gonna put this, a nice dish in casserole dish, you can do this in a saucepan if you want, um, on a uh, low to medium heat, and we're just gonna start cooking now. All right, so the leeks, we're just gonna roughly chop them, and I'll, I'm gonna go through substitutes uh, as we cook along, um, just to give you an idea of other sort of uh, vegetables that will work in this okay so leek one of my favorite ingredients right uh, come from the alien family the same sort of family as the onions here uh, tons of benefits of the alien family itself um, if you look at the phytonutrient benefits there are a whole bunch of different chemicals that we know can directly and indirectly uh, impact inflammation in a good way the other thing that's very useful to know about leeks is that it's a, it's a really good type of specialized um, fiber called a prebiotic which we know indirectly impacts uh, inflammation by uh, impacting your gut microbiome which are powerful modulators of inflammation um, so we want to try and get different types of fiber in our diet as much as possible um, I forgot to put that extra virgin olive oil in here I'm using extra virgin olive oil the reason why and about two tablespoons or so the reason why is because we're using this at low to medium heat, so we're not destroying the benefits that we find in a good bottle of extra virgin olive oil. I'm using an Organico, but there are plenty out there. Um, we're not taking to a high temperature, so we're not gonna be destroying those bonds. Um, it's good for uh, in terms of flavor, so we're, we're matching the flavor to this particular dish as well. Um, and it's a, a very good versatile oil to use as well. It's got a good mouthfeel. So we're using um, olive oil for those reasons, but you can use a whole bunch of different oils um, as long as they're well processed. So minimally processed and uh, cold pressed, they're fantastic as well. Who's cooking with me? Oh, there's someone from, oh, you've got spinach. Yeah, so you could use spinach. You could use asparagus, the ends of the asparagus that are a bit more woody. You could use um, uh, kale, uh, different types of kale. Cavolo Nero would work with this as well. So, you've never done a live cook before, but always wanted to try and almost all of the ingredients. Oh, that's cool, Rachel, don't worry about it. Um, Rachel on Facebook's asking uh, if she can cook along, I think, without all the ingredients. That's absolutely fine. This recipe will definitely work. The main ingredients are a little bit of seasoning, dried herb, some passata uh, and your lentils here and a little bit of veg stock 
uh, and you can add flavor as we go along. If you've got garlic, fantastic. Onion, even better. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna add to the flavors with a little bit of red wine, a little bit of balsamic vinegar, sun-dried tomatoes, and a bit of stock as well. And I've got a secret ingredient, which is the dried mushrooms, beautiful umami flavor. We'll talk about mushrooms in a sec. So if you're cooking along, just do a, uh, a nice fine dice of your onions. If you can't do a fine dice, don't worry about it. You can always um, do like half moons or whatever you're comfortable with. And if you're not doing it as fast as me, don't worry, you will catch up because I'm gonna be chatting a lot as we go through this. So a good amount of onion. I did say um, shallots in the instructions, uh, but I couldn't find shallots. I could only find uh, just brown uh, onion. So like I'm saying, like, you know, we have to be quite adaptable to, to recipes these days, and that's why I'm, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible so everyone can cook along. And I'm using literally every single part of the onion. That's, that's literally the bottom end of the onion. That's, the, the whole onion has gone in here, apart from this half. Obviously, this is going to be going back uh, for another time. But most of the onion has gone in. I'm going to stir this round with our leek. I'm going to chop uh, a little bit of garlic and that's going to go into, okay? So the garlic, you can either chop it nice and finely like I'm doing, like that, or you could chop it roughly and then just use the knife and press it through so it kind of presses it into a puree. And you can put a little bit of salt on that to a little, get a little bit of grip on that. Or a nice, uh, uh, easy way of doing it, if you're not a confident chopper, is just to get a grater and grate it in straight into the pot, okay? Um, grating in, uh, it doesn't do anything to the nutritional value or anything, um, but uh, it's just an easier way of chopping when you're not confident cook, or if you are a key worker and you're busy. Actually, I've got a message from uh, a, a colleague from Canada um, saying, you know, I don't know how you do it, going to work and being able to chop, uh, sorry, not chop, being able to cook at the end of it. And, and it's because I'm, I'm doing it super, super easy here. So you can do this, whatever your job, um, whether you have kids, whether you're a full-time employee, I mean, that is a full-time job, having kids is on top of anything else that you might do. Um, but yeah, this is, this is why uh, I create recipes like this. So I don't know if you can see, probably can't see, but the leaks and everything are sort of, Going away, we want to try and get a little bit of colour. We don't need too much colour, but a little bit of colour will do. Pinch of salt, a little bit of uh, uh, pepper as well. Let me see if I can read any comments. You're watching in Cyprus. Oh, great. But you don't have any. Oh, but you're, oh, you're going to make it tomorrow. Yeah, good. Nice one. Thank you. Uh, let's see who else. Great. Are oh, there some people cooking on? I think. Uh, Oh, thank you, Mr. I'm not a master chef, that's for sure, but um, I try my best when it comes to trying to inject flavor. And talking about flavor, we're gonna put in our bay and our rosemary here as well. So I've got two beautiful bays here. You can find them dry, you don't have to get fresh. Um, and rosemary as well. I'm putting it in whole because we're gonna chuck, we're gonna pick it out too uh, when, we, um, when we get towards the end of the dish because you don't really need those. All right, another flavor enhancer. A very good uh, product to have in your store cupboard and you'll probably still be able to find these on the shelves as well uh, dried sun uh, sun-dried tomatoes or you can get the sun-dried tomatoes that have got the oil in them and don't don't throw away the oil the oil is fantastic it's a beautifully flavored oil because it's been sat um, with the sun-dried tomatoes in it um, and you can use that as a dressing uh, or you can even throw if I if I was using this with oil I throw it in here as well the health benefits. So, health benefits of this particular dish are multitude, but the, the main thing is the fact that we are getting so many portions of vegetables in here, and that is the aim of the game. It's trying to get at least three portions in at every single meal time. It sounds a lot, but I'm showing you how to do that right now with this particular recipe. You just, and they're coming from the passata or chopped tomatoes or canned tomatoes, whatever ones you've got, coming from the uh, pulses, so we have um, the uh, uh, brown lentils, and they're coming from the leek and the onion. And as this is a recipe for two people, you're gonna have two, three of your portions uh, every single day, and there's tons of studies showing the associations 
between high consumption of fruit and vegetables and low incidence of a plethora of different conditions, not just obesity, heart disease, autoimmune conditions, uh, kidney problems, issue, and, and uh, high blood pressure as well, which is one of the, the biggest issues. You don't have wine either, what can you use instead? Don't worry if you don't have wine, you could uh, use just use the stock and the passata. If you want a little bit of acidity that you get from the wine, you could throw in a little bit of red wine vinegar, um, or apple cider vinegar, or white wine vinegar. Um, balsamic vinegar as well will also work, and I'm gonna throw this in, this is a brand new bottle. So I'm gonna have to open this on camera now. Uh, let's see if I have. Love mushrooms, definitely doing this. And you can use fresh mushrooms as well if you want, Charlotte. That's absolutely fine. So then the lentils aren't cooked, the lentils are raw. And that's a very good point, I'm gonna put these in now. So they cook a little bit in the, um, in the oil that I've got in here and with the rest of the ingredients, but they're raw. I'm using, the, uh, using raw brown lentils. If you didn't have time to soak them, don't worry. Make sure they're properly rinsed. And when I say rinsed, I mean like put it in a bowl, get in there with loads of fresh water and then drain it as well. Um, uh, and if you're using cooked, you can use cooked in this recipe. It will take you even less time than it will take me. I'm going to battle with this uh, pasta and vinegar. Now I need to open the bottle of wine as well on camera, which is going to be interesting. But yeah, let's see, who else is cooking with me? How long did you soak the dried lentils for? Uh, about 15, 20 minutes. That's all you need for brown lentils. And another replacement, if you don't have brown lentils, um, that's open, is um, uh, green lentils, um, red lentils, and uh, pew lentils. Pew lentils is my favorite type of lentil. I know, I do have a favorite type of lentil, I know. Okay, so these are the dried mushrooms. Beautiful flavor. You can get chanterelle, you can get oyster, you can get shiitake. Um, but the, honestly, any dried mushrooms, they just have such intense flavor. And uh, they usually say, or I usually say, to rehydrate your mushrooms in water, hot water, and then throw them in. But because this is gonna go in with the passata and stock, it will rehydrate and become voluptuous um, without the need to soak them before. So don't worry about it. In terms of like a fast recipe, which is exactly what we're doing right now, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, dried herbs of the Provence, any dried herbs you have, really good, just as impressive as fresh. They hold a lot of their nutrient value. I try and go for organic where possible, but now is not the time to go into organic versus everything else. So, um, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of pepper. So I'm gonna show you this because this is already smelling and looking absolutely divine. Okay, so. In here, dried herbs, leeks, onion, bay, rosemary, dried mushroom, and brown lentils. If I was just doing this, a little bit of veg stock, amazing. It would still taste absolutely wonderful. And if you're cooking along, any people cooking along, just show me your hands. Um, and I will, and you know, I'll give you any suggestions as well. Um, but yeah, this is, this on its own would be amazing. But we're gonna, we're gonna take it up even higher than that. Uh, where's my veg stock? Here you go. All right, veg stock. This is why I didn't put too much salt in because we're gonna get some flavor from the veg stock itself. And put this in here. I'm just using a simple veg stock. Um, you could use the, the liquid ones as well. That works absolutely fine. And I'm gonna open this bottle of wine. Where's my wine opener? Oh, here it is. As you know, before that, I'm going to start, I'm going to try and get the um, the lentils cooking. So we'll throw in about 200, 250 um, mils of water, maybe even 300 actually, 300, and we're going to throw in a jar of passata as well. So everything. So before, what was happening is because we had the uh, olive oil in and we had the onions and everything. It was sautéing, it was cooking, it was kind of, it was quite vigorous vigorous um, but now when you add the water it slows everything down absolutely slows everything down so you've got a much uh, more mellow sound when you're listening as well as your sense that your uh, taste uh, senses and smell taste is, is engaged when you're cooking and um, and now everything's caught up kind of mellow and we can bring it to a simmer and it's that simmer that's going to cook everything down okay a little bit of uh, tomato in here don't waste it carefully put tiny bit of hot water, make sure you don't put too much otherwise you'll crack the glass, you don't want that, 
and there's a little bit, there's always a little bit of almost like tomato puree here. Don't, don't waste that, it's flavour, all flavour. And the good thing about using tomato is that they have these novel antioxidants in as well, which are incredible for health. We know that a whole bunch of them have been studied for their uh, benefits to um, reducing the risk of cancer. Um, and they do have, um, yes, antioxidant properties, but signaling properties that really do communicate with our cells at an at a, a, a incredible biological level. So we want to try and get every ounce of our food as possible right now. And now has never been the best time to really get into cooking, man. I th I, I'm a true believer of this. I'm going to put some balsamic vinegar in, and then we're going to have a chat. And then someone's going to keep an eye. There's about a tablespoon or so of balsamic vinegar goes in. And we're going to have a, a chat. But any other questions you have? Lid goes on. We're going to bring that to simmer. Whilst it's coming to a simmer, I'm going to open my wine and give myself a half glass. Because it's midweek. It's already been a, it's been a long week already, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a half glass because you're allowed to have a half glass every other day. I think it's very important to make sure that you know, it's particularly you know, me being a general practitioner and working in uh, a &E where we see a lot of uh, patients coming in because of alcohol-related issues, to to not sort of understate the issues with alcohol as I open a bottle of red wine live on Instagram um, because um, you know it's it's. <laughs> It is great and it's you know, socially accepted by a lot of people and I think it's a fantastic you know, way of um, socialising with people but there are a lot of people that can't tolerate um, you know, having something that is a known addictive substance so it's really important to be respectful of that. Anyway, uh, let's see. Loving your podcast. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And whilst you're walking, yeah, you're listening to a podcast. I hope the podcasts are helping people try to manage the, uh, the reasonable anxiety that we have there and giving you the facts about like how to approach the news, how to approach uh, the numbers as well, what you should be expecting, how to manage expectations. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna slot sop some of this red wine in here. It's over here. All right, go, go in with about, a little bit more. Um, it's probably about uh, 100 mils of red wine and the rest of it goes in here. And now we can just chill. We can just have a chat for 15, 20 minutes or so. I'll keep an eye on it over there. And who's, who's cooking? I want to know who's cooking. You took, a, you took my book with you to Kima today but fell asleep. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. Um, yeah, so the book's not on Audible, Juliet. Thank you very much for asking. Um, I, I do would love to do an audiobook at some point. You can find a lot of the information um, that we've talked about in the past um, on, on the podcast. So there's, a shoot, there's like 50 odd episodes now. I'm actually going to be doing an episode with um, Professor Thompson, who's uh, an oncologist, uh, who's done some incredible work uh, on polyphenols and, and stuff. So Juliet, you might find that super useful. Um, and yeah, cooking books on Audible aren't very easy. You're right, you're right. Uh, thank you so much, Andy. I really appreciate that. Alternative to lentils, I suffer with uh, oral pollen allergy syndrome and struggle with uh, beans and pulses. No worries. So if you eat uh, meat, for example, you can eat a little bit of meat with this. Um, you could have um, some chicken breast that would, that would actually braise quite nicely. Um, the other things, if you don't have pulses, um, in terms of uh, plant proteins, you could add some seeds at the end, but I guess you, you suffer from oral allergy syndrome, so that might not be appropriate for you. It, I think it depends on what your normal sort of sources of plant-based proteins are. Um, so you might, you might find what you tend to eat could work with this. The other thing is, um, uh, again, if you, uh, some people actually find that fermented foods, so like a tempeh might work for them as well. So that's another, that's something else that you could, but this is a really good question. Uh, cooking, your partner's telling me instructions. Oh, that's brilliant, Grant. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I, I'd love to see the image as well. Just hashtag um, TDK cook along and we'll, we'll have a look at the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the recipes. We missed the beginning. Oh, uh, so we're cooking a mushroom bourguignon. Uh, so if you rewind this, I'm gonna share it on socials, I'm gonna be on Instagram um, and on YouTube later. Um, so yeah, just let me know and uh, uh, we'll, we'll put it up there too. 
Books are amazing. Thank you so much, Heather. Really appreciate it. I do eat meat. I, I eat uh, a variety of products, but I'm I'm plant focused. So probably 85, 90 percent of what I eat is plants. Uh, would I say keto veg or keto vegan is healthy? Uh, I think uh, so. It's a really good question. Um, I'm actually doing an episode on ketogenic diets with. Uh, one of the only registered dietitians in the country that prescribes ketogenic diets in a therapeutic manner for uh, treatment of refractory epilepsy, as well as um, some uh, uh, some uh, types of cancer as well, in, in particular glioblastoma. Um, there are some reasons where I believe a vegan uh, or a keto diet, whether it's vegan or, uh, or meat, uh, would be useful in a therapeutic manner. Do I think it's useful for most people? Probably not. Um, but the way, the principles of eating that I always go on about are whole food. So if you go to the extent of eating largely plants and lots of different colors, as well as keeping your food mostly whole, so that's minimizing processed food, you're gonna be getting the majority of the benefits uh, that a, a keto diet m may give you. Um, the added benefits of the ketones aren't even that well established in the literature yet, apart from in those two scenarios that I described earlier. So I think that's something to, to bear in mind. And I think most people would, would benefit from just going the middle way and just sorting out their diet by reducing processed foods and, and sticking to larger plants. So hope that answers your question. Sorry, that's a bit long-winded. Thanks for your great work. I really appreciate it. Uh, I do enjoy kefir. Kefir is uh, pretty good, actually. I don't mind it. Um, I think uh, there's water kefirs, coconut kefirs. I don't have it every single day. Um, I just get a variety of different uh, foods in my, in my diet, mainly. Um, and I stick to water as my, my drink of choice. Uh, the most... Uh, healthy mushroom variety. Oh yeah, we're going to talk about mushrooms. So there isn't a particular in in in, gen, in terms of food in general, but mushrooms can can uh, also be included in that. There isn't a way to sort of stratify which is healthier than the other. They're just different types. So a white onion might be regarded as a less healthier onion than red because red has anthocyanins and anthocyanins have all these benefits, but the white have certain allicin a whole bunch of different polyphenols that we know have just as impressive benefits as your red um, but in different quantities so it's kind of like you know comparing a ferrari that's yellow versus red you know, one is one is pleasing to the eye for some people a red one is pleasing to the eye for another person but the, at the core of it they're both ferraris and they both perform like pretty incredible actions when you take them around a race course so you know i think that's the way i look at vegetables you can't really pit them up against uh, against each other on the basis of like type they provide loads of different um phytonutrients that are beneficial for us so yeah uh, uh you cooked the mushroom burger recently so delicious oh thanks lindsay i appreciate that um this is slightly different recipe i'm just going to check it out slightly a different recipe but yeah uh, it, it's similar to the one that's on the website um i've just made some uh, suggestions of ways in which you can change it because um, not everyone has lentils or whatever. You could use cannellini beans, you could use pinto beans, um, you could use, you know, if you're making this at the weekend for Easter, you could put like um, uh, some meat in here and stew it for a longer period of time to make sure it's all like nice and soft. Um, so loads of different ways in which you can use this recipe, whether you're a meat eater or plant based, uh, plant focused, I should say, like myself. I'm just gonna show you what this looks like at the moment. Make sure this isn't too hot. Cool. So it smells incredible. You've got the balsamic vinegar, you have the sweetness and the tartness of the, um, uh, the wine uh, matched with the tomato. It should be bubbling away, like just like it is here. So you can give it a stir, but we're just gonna leave it alone for another well, uh, 15 minutes or so. Okay, pop this on. This is like, I know I'm chatting to you guys, but if I was cooking this for two or doubling the ingredients and doing it for four people, this is the time I would clean down the kitchen and it's like, you know, my chopping board and that's about it. Set the table up and then you're ready to go. So this is sort of like the frictionless way I want to create all recipes going forward. So uh, can I summarize the steps? Yeah, sure. So 
Leeks, onions, uh, mushroom, put it in the pan, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, add your spices, add the passata, the lentils. You could even do it at the same time. It really doesn't matter. The only uh, benefit of adding the leek and the onion is that you get to caramelize them. But if you're not really worried about that, then don't worry, just shove it all in the, the casserole dish and just let it bubble away for 20, 25 minutes or so, uh, and you're good to go. Um, but the, the full recipe instructions are on my Instagram and Facebook post from just the time before, so you'll be able to see everything there. Cool. Uh, what milk do I use, plant or dairy? So I don't actually drink that much dairy, uh, Diane. Um, uh, I tend to opt for almond because of flavor uh, when I put it in the coffee um, and I don't actually have that much dairy and that's because I've, I've had a mild intolerance ever since I was a kid um, and, and I've noticed actually a lot of people, a lot of patients have mild intolerances once and they, they become aware of it once they remove it for whatever reason. So yeah, I think um, you know, I'm not a fan of just uh, excluding dairy because of the sake of it but I personally uh, don't have that much dairy in my diet. Although I do have cheese. Yeah, that's probably the one thing I do have. Um, and usually a lot of aged cheeses because I bloody love cheese, it's amazing. Uh, your lunch is done, no worries, of course. Yeah, this could be lunch the next day. Um, and just remember the formula, it's three, two, one. It's three portions, uh, two servings and one pan. That's, it. that's, that's a doctor's kitchen recipe right there. Uh, love the podcast. Thank you very much. Be safe. I appreciate it. Oh, from India. Wow. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, do, do, do. A lot of questions about keto diets and diabetes. Um, so I don't think you need to go as extreme as keto for diabetes, type 2 diabetes this is. Um, but there are some potential benefits for those who have who lack metabolic control. So yeah, there's a lot of, there, there are some benefits. But I, I would say the, the easiest and most effective way to try and see what happens when you change your nutrition is just stick to the principles of healthy eating. Whole foods, largely plants, lots of colors, getting variety in there, plenty of fiber, and then see what happens. And if you need a therapeutic means of a diet thereafter, then do it in conjunction, do it with um, someone who's gonna be in your team, like a registered nutritionist or a dietitian, or even your GP if they are um, uh, read up on this kind of stuff, as, as a lot more people are becoming. Uh, do I make recipes for people with IBS? I'm gonna do a couple of weeks for um, low FODMAP recipes, yes. So um, if you were to make this low FODMAP, uh, I would take out the onions and the garlic, um, uh, or even the leek as well. There are, there are a few brassica vegetables that I think people can tolerate, um, like pak choy, bok choy, from, from memory, I might have got it wrong. Um, so I'd use those as alternatives. Uh, and I would use more in the way of um, herbs to try and get more of that in, into the into um, flavor. Um, I wouldn't use wine because wine can be irritant as well, although we are cooking off a lot of the sugars and the uh, alcohol content. Uh, balsamic vinegar would work quite well. Um, yeah, that's how I'd probably make it a little bit more IBS friendly, but there are loads of IBS friendly recipes out there, whole like blogs dedicated to IBS recipes. So. Um, as long as you're getting three portions of vegetables at each meal time, that's the main thing you need to be looking out for. Uh, oh, thank you, Onle. Appreciate that. Do I hand you? Oh, I'm Rachel. No worries. <laughs> I tried this recipe Thursday. Already cooked lentil soup this morning, but I've decided to try mushrooms and lentils. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, no, it's it's great. The mushrooms uh, and the lentils do complement each other. You've got um, some, some really interesting novel antioxidant compounds in uh, mushroom, like ergothione, um, that have been studied again for their ability to reduce oxidative stress. Um, so again, you know, getting as many different types of uh, veggies uh, in your diet is, is bound to have benefits, and it's about diversity and variety. It's something that I'm gonna be writing about in um, future publications, so um, check that out. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Yeah, so what I'm doing right now is um, I'm still working in A&E. Um, it's getting busier with COVID patients. People are doing the right thing by uh, staying away um, and trying to minimize any excuse or minimize any need to go to A&E. So we're seeing less in the way of accidents. Um, you know, people aren't playing football or going climbing. So we're seeing much less injuries. Um, I've seen a few, 
a few kitchen related injuries and DIY related injuries, but other than that, nothing really. Um, but do remember that your GPs are still open. They, they will always be open. There is no way in which GPs will close apart from you know, public holidays. And there's always emergency GPs as well. So if you are having symptoms that aren't related to COVID or you know, they've been bugging you or whatever, you can still speak to your GP, pick up the phone. They will still do telephone consultations. They'll do video consultations. It's quite amazing just how flexible our NHS system is. And honestly, uh, we are still open for business. We are still seeing patients. So even if it's not related to COVID, don't worry about it. We will still see you. So please do, please do do that. Uh, great information on mushrooms, no worries. Apple a day, you're right, you are right. Uh, do I have a cookbook? Yes, I've got two. One's called Eat to Be Illness and the other one is called The Doctor's Kitchen. You can find them in the link in my bio, uh, on Instagram, YouTube, uh, wherever. Uh, I'll create you from Poland, brilliant, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Hongle. Major Orzine. Oh, yeah, so one of the recipes that I've made, which is similar to this actually, is uh, the aubergine and walnut ragu. Uh, which is from my second book, uh, Eat to Be Honest, which is definitely like one of the favorites on the shoot that we did. I mean, so many people loved that recipe, it was great. Um, so yeah, no, we had. So who's, who's cooking with me? I wanna know who's cooking with me. Kind of making your one pot mixed bean chili. Oh, brilliant. Oh, you make, so you're cooking with me, but you're, you're cooking a different dish. I wanna know who's actually cooking this dish. And if you are cooking this dish, make sure you've got a little bit of red wine, just a little. Just to, you know, the experience of cooking is, is magnified with a little tipple. Got well, someone from Switzerland, brilliant. Hey, Kylie. I mean, it's great to see that people are making the uh, recipes from the, uh, from the other books as well. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> cooking and drinking, yeah. I remember what I said about the drinking in the first instance though, like, uh, yes, it's great to have a drink uh, every now and then, but as a, as a doctor and as, particularly as a general practitioner and someone who works in A&E, um, I've got a responsibility to remind people that alcohol is perhaps one of the most problematic um, uh, substances that we, we have in our uh, troubling our, our, our healthcare system. So it's really important to, to remind people that we have to drink responsibly. Um, you know, it's, it's quite amazing how many, and not to bring down the tone, but it's quite amazing how many uh, issues are related directly or indirectly to alcohol consumption um, that far exceed uh, the issues um, with, say, for example, smoking. Um, you know, alcohol is, is definitely one of the biggest issues of our time, um, just because of the ease of which it's, um, it's accessible and stuff. And unfortunately, it is, can be addictive. Um, but in the you know if we if we're responsible with it and we drink like the Mediterraneans, then um, we can enjoy it. And there are some health benefits associated with a tiny bit. And when I say tiny bit, I mean like half a glass every other day of uh, uh, that being in your regular diet. You have, a, you have a glass of red wine. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, brilliant, Karina. You're having a drink with me. That's awesome. You're having the broad bean curry from tomorrow night in North Wales. Amazing. Oh, that's great, Heather. Thanks so much. I'm so glad you're making the broad bean curry. That's brilliant. Are my books available in South Africa? I think they are, actually. I think they are. Um, I don't know if they qualify for uh, essential products, but um, I'm pretty sure you can get that. I've had them delivered uh, before. I, I know of some people that have had them delivered. So if you are, um, yeah, definitely check that out. Anita's just joined. Hey, Anita. Uh, what's my favorite dessert? Oh, man, that's such a good, that's such a good question. Um, what is my favorite dessert? So my, my typical dessert, uh, believe it or not, is just a slab of dark chocolate with an apple. Uh, I, I mean, literally, the, um, maybe a bit of peanut butter, and that's it. And you, you know, you've got some beautiful flavanols and dark chocolate, but really, I'm just a big fan of bitter dark chocolate. Um, it's just so flavorful. I love it. Um, but what my favorite chocolate is, is probably definitely something um, to do with chocolate. It will be a fondant. In fact, my, one of my favorite restaurants is Roca, and they do an incredible fondant. It's so good. It's, it's yeah, if you have, when, when we get out of this situation, I'm definitely going there. 
Um, how much do I know about Ayurveda? I don't know a great deal, apart from what my parents taught me whilst I was growing up, I guess. Um, but I am going to be interviewing a neuroscientist based in um, uh, an aging research clinic um, in West, West Coast America, who's an incredible physician, who's, who's uh, wife's a physician as well and uh, has, yeah, has studied Ayurveda. Um, it's, it, it's meant to be amazing. I've heard lots of parallels with lifestyle medicine as well, so it's not as uh, different to the things that I already talk about. So yeah, yeah. 90% uh, lint. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Anna, yeah. Yeah, 90% lint is probably, 85% I think is my sweet spot. Yeah, 85% dark chocolate that is. Uh, yes, I have a fridge full of mushrooms. Oh, brilliant, I'm glad. I'm just gonna check on this because this has been cooking now for about 40 minutes, I wanna say, and it's getting a little bit dark, so I wanna make sure you guys can still see me. Okay, brilliant. All right, so at this point, you wanna test your lentils, okay? So you wanna just taste your lentils to make sure they are properly cooked. I'm just gonna give it a teaspoon. So you've got this beautiful unctuous sauce. I'll show it to you guys in a second, which is thickened, and you have the flavors of the other Provence that I put in. The, um, the bay is infused it, a little bit of red wine, balsamic and vinegar, giving a little bit. It's all about balancing flavors. You want to balance the acidity with the sweetness. You want to make sure that you're getting a good complex um, uh, notes of the, of the allium family, the leeks and uh, the onions there as well. And that lentil is cooked to perfection. Don't put your spoon back in there. We're gonna take this off. Now in the recipe, I said you chop some parsley and you pour it over the top just before you serve it. Unfortunately, as is the case these days, I wasn't able to get any parsley. So I'm not gonna put anything like that in it. All I am is gonna put a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil as I serve it. Um, but if you've got sage, use sage. Um, if you've got any sort of like parsley, whether it be curly parsley or whatever, use parsley or even dried herbs would work too. In fact, I might use some dried herbs. All right, so let me show you guys what this looks like. Can you see that? Yeah, buddy, yeah. So this is your mushroom bourguignon. Super quick, lentils, uh, leeks, onions, bay leaf, little bit of wine, beautiful acidic flavors as well to, to balance with the sweetness. This is one pot cooking at its simplest. I've just cooked that from scratch using simple raw lentils. And if you've got cooked lentils, even better. If you wanted to use a different type of um, bean, whether it be cannellini, whether it be pinto, whether it be navy, whether it be white bean, you can use white, but it's absolutely fine. You can all use that. So, um, and yes, if you have uh, cooked mush uh, um, raw mushrooms, you can still use that as well. Just bang them in. Um, or a top tip is to, if you don't want to do it one pot, fry off the mushrooms in a separate pan, and then when this is cooked, put it on top, so that way you, you keep some of the sort of crispiness and the texture of um, some sauteed mushrooms. So yeah, yes, lentils. Lentils for breakfast. I'm probably gonna have this for breakfast myself. Looks delicious. Thank you very much, really appreciate it. And uh, you're, working, <laughs> you're working your way through all the recipes. Oh, that's brilliant. I really do appreciate that. Amazing. I am going to love you and leave you right now. It's been quite a long day. <laughs> I've got a shipment of Erlen beans. This is perfect. Oh, that's awesome. And Diane, yes, uh, I believe so. But um, uh, I've talked about it at length in my last book, Eat a Bit Illness. Um, I think there are ways in which we can certainly manage um, different sort of conditions with food, but the primary aim is to try and prevent disease in the first place. So that's kind of um, one, my, one of my sort of uh, uh, ways of thinking about things. People are always asking about um, tips to not put on weight while stuck in the house. I have a couple. Um, a, uh, try to uh, limit the times when you eat. It's something called time-restricted feeding. I'm talking about that a bit more on a future podcast. Another one is get a standing desk. So. I have a standing desk that reminds me to sort of walk around uh, the place every hour or so, so you're actually keeping your body moving while they're just stuck in one position. And I actually recommend that for people who work in offices themselves. Uh, and the other thing is making sure that you're eating plenty of vegetables and nutrient-dense uh, ingredients, and that way you're less likely to um, uh, crave snacks. 
And the other thing is don't keep uh, uh, snacks that you know you don't want to eat in your house. Um, that's probably perhaps one of the main, main issues that people have. They will buy cakes and cookies and stuff like that with good intentions and say, oh, I'm just gonna have that for a treat. But when you know it's in the cupboard, I'm exactly the same, I will eat the entire pack. Uh, and that's, that's me being super honest. Um, and that's why I try not to keep um, any junk food in the house. I always have, whenever I do indulge in junk food, it's gonna be outside the house. So that's just one of the sort of guys I have to, to help me. So yeah, all right, no worries. Oh, there's loads of people from Canada, it's amazing. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so I'm doing loads of home workouts as well. Um, not posting them because there's plenty of people doing home workouts. I'm not gonna add to the barrage of that, but um, keep yourselves active, make sure you're happy, uh, listen to the podcasts, practice gratitude, cook Doctor's Kitchen recipes, or keep you healthy, keep you full, um, and keep you inspired as well, and uh, just, Keep on being kind and positive to each other because I think that's exactly what we need these days. And I really, really do appreciate all the support and love. And um, I might be on a show next week. I'll put, give more um, details later in the week, uh, but it could be on um, uh, main TV. So when it, if it is, I will go, I'll let you guys know. And um, yeah, it will be a pleasure to speak to more of you. All right, have a fantastic evening. If you're cooking this, enjoy it. I know you will, and I'll see you another time. See you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. There's so many others for you to enjoy right here. Check out the doctorskitchen.com, sign up to the newsletter where I give science-based recipes every single week. There's a podcast, there's two books, there's loads more content on social media, doctors underscore kitchen, and I hope to see you there.